unbelievable. Um, everything. You know, you know, after last year's COVID and had to wait a year, but uh, it was worth the wait. Did you know Troy was going to mention you in his speech? I did not. I did not. Um, he's, he's just, uh, you know, he's been that way his whole life. Uh, very passionate, um, very determined. And he was a very coachable kid when uh, when I had him at, you know, young age. And, uh, you know, we talked ball all the time. And so it was a, a nice mention. How emotional was that for you? Uh, man, I couldn't stop crying. I, I, when he got on stage, I couldn't stop crying. They didn't have to say anything about me. It was just a moment, not only for him, but my family, uh, my culture. Uh, just wish that my mom and dad and, you know, the, you know, the people that my older brother, Salu, he lived with in Oregon, were around to see it. You mentioned talking ball with him. Do you still talk to him, you know, about Vikings games? Or anything? Yeah, we talk about ball all the time, just to, you know, the proper fits, you know, how would, how would he play a, a certain formation and emotion. Uh, we talked about, uh, uh, you know, well, it's <laughs> some fun stuff. You know, uh, I remember when, uh, when Kansas City, what, two, two years ago, when the back hit that long run, and he goes, Uncle, I've been in that situation. You know, it's hard to fit off that motion and boom, boom, boom. So it's, it's so you always think about what you can do. Um, even when, when I coached against them after a game, we'd talk about six situation, different scenarios. But the good thing about him is he's very creative. He'll take a chance. And now it was tough to, to coach against him because he could have been anywhere. Kennedy, you mentioned your culture and why this was such a big deal for for American Samoa in general. Can you just tell us a little bit more about that? And why was this so profound for, for your well, culture? You know, we it's a very poor country. It's not, uh, uh, and it's very family oriented. Um, the village, uh, pretty much. It's a Matai system, and my dad and you know was the Matai, and basically you took care of the whole whole village, and that culture has continued all the way through um, through our lives, and the humility and the service um, that's uh, part of the culture, and you take care of your family, and you stay humble, and you work, put your head down, and go to work. And you don't have to talk about it, you don't have to brag about it. And just do your job. It felt that way. <laughs> really enjoyed it. Um, really, it just he did that with his speech when he talked about being the first generation of uh, Samoa uh, that came from Samoa and then end up in the Hall of Fame. It's, it's, it was. It was, uh, it's going to take a while for me to come down. Kennedy, with the change here in offensive line coaches uh, before camp, how has that affected what you do with the running backs considering those two positions seem like they work pretty close together? Yeah, it's been fun uh, because it's, uh, they come with new ideas. Uh, I've, uh, you know, Dalvin and I and CJ have had four offensive coordinators for uh, old line coaches. Uh, so it, to me, it's not stagnant. We're, we know what we want to do. We want to give the ball to 33 and figure a way to do that. Uh, but it's always fun for me because it's always a, a new thought and you don't want to get pinholed just one way. And uh, you, I like the creativity that they bring, but uh, I've worked with a lot of good old line coaches and and every single one of them have a commitment to bringing out the best in their unit. Uh, it's a very unselfish group, and usually the old line coach is a very unselfish guy. And uh, I, I, um, I've enjoyed it. I know Mike Zimmer said that there won't be anybody with that run game coordinator title that Rick Dennison had last year. Do you mm -hmm. anticipate just knowing what your guys can do that you'll take on a bigger role and help calling some of those runs? Oh, I've, I, you know. Zim, we talked about it, and I said, Zim, I, I'm always going to do what, you know, 
Kennedy wants to do, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna make an impact in uh, influencing and uh, and having our guys be explosive and be efficient. And uh, we're gonna all work together as a unit. And anywhere you've been, the good ones work together. What have been your impressions of Kane and Wangu in the first couple of weeks here? Uh, very bright young man, uh, explosive, uh, very. Um, cautious of wanting to do things right i just got to unleash them just you know be creative uh there's going to be some times that you make a mistake but make it 100 miles an hour and you'll be fine and uh i'm looking forward to it um because he's not only doing that coach zim showed a, a nice special teams where he covered kickoff and he was one of the first guys down the field and you know had a really good collision and uh that's what we're about in our room you know making plays with or without the football be be the guy that can uh, just impact. Uh, let's don't just be out here wearing a uniform. The speed is obviously very noticeable with him, but what are some of the little things that rookie running backs have to, to master before they can be trusted? Well, it, it, and, and again, it's just seeing defensive structure. Uh, pretty, uh, and going against Zim every day, he's going to get all kinds of looks. So with those different looks and different fits and different pressures, uh, you tend to not just cut it loose. And uh, we got to get them to just cut it loose. Uh, so I showed him some tape of, you know, Dalvin when he was a rookie. Uh, we put him in pressure situation and Dalvin said that to them. You know, we're going to put you in pressure situation and and, uh, and the most pressure you're going to feel is me on your behind. So don't worry about that. Just go have fun. Oh, anytime you go against, uh, you know, really good players, uh, that, that, you know, what iron sharpens iron, they say. Uh, it's been a been a fun process for us. And then being out in the field and getting some preseason games, that's, that's really good too. I know Clint mentioned earlier this offseason they're going to like get tracking devices on players to determine how much run guys are getting. Are there any cognizant of making sure Dalvin's at full go when it matters the most? How, how do you anticipate approaching preseason games when it comes to him knowing that you know what he can do and just trying to kind of maybe limit some of those touches on him? Yeah, that's that, that's uh, Zim. Coach Zim, uh, will, we will sit, you know, every week, and he'll say he wants, you know, these guys to play, and, and that's the plan. But we always prepare for for uh, the workload. The, you know, the number one thing for him is just going to be stamina and getting hit. And... Uh, uh, we should get some good work here tomorrow and Thursday with the Broncos. With as many touches as he had last year, what's your role as a coach in trying to make sure that you can keep him for a 17-game season now? Have, uh, we have a pretty good routine that we've been together for four years. I know what I know what his body looks like. I know what he's expecting. So there's uh, it's it's been a good relationship and. Uh, you know, obviously, I want him to play and make a lot of plays, but uh, I, I kind of have a pulse of, uh, and that also ties with having a uh, three preseason games and how our new coordinator calls the plays as well.